In this video, we're going to talk about offsets. So offsets are very useful, especially when you're trying to palletize something or if you have multiple different items that you're working on or picking up that is down a conveyor belt or a conveyor row or if it's arrayed along a circular path, you can easily set up one program and then use the offsets to pick up multiple things without changing a bunch of code. So in previous videos, we've talked about position registries. Uh, now we're going to use a modification of a position registry to get our offset. So the position registry element is the actual thing that we're going to utilize to do an offset, whether that's in the Z, X, or Y, or along the WPR rotation item. So we're going to start looking at what each of these things mean. The first thing is PR, so which stands for position register. And then inside the position register, you see an I and a J. Each one of those means two different things. I is the actual which position registry number are you going to utilize or pull from. So right now I have a position register of home recorded here, and then we have position registry of two and so on all the way down there. So which position register are you going to pull from is the I. Then the J is inside that position registry. What your element are we going to reference? So you can see right here we have the Cartesian coordinate system X, Y, Z with the WPR rotation rotations on there. So if I want to reference the Z, we could do an offset from there. And how we see these numbers is our L position, which is the linear position. If we want to pull from the X, we are going to use number one. Y is going to be number two. Number three is going to be Z. WPR is four, five, six. For if we want to use a joint position or modify a joint position, we would switch this to J pause. Um, J position, joint position, joint one, joint two, and so on, all the way to joint N, which could be a rail system for your actual robot itself. So we're going to set up this scenario uh, so that we're offsetting the Z coordinate, so the robot keeps moving up, and we're going to do it four different times. So we're going to go around this loop once, go up, go around the loop again, go up, go around the loop again, go up, and go around the loop again. So we're going to do it a total of four different times. So we're using this program, Square, which we already have created. So let's go into that. So here we have our U-Frame and U-Tool set up. We have our home position up here, and then we have our actual program callout. So let's do some modifications of this program. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a couple registries. The first registry we need to set up is just a basic register where we can count how many loops we have done. So I'm going to insert a few lines here, and we insert maybe like five or six different lines here and I can always go back and delete them if I need to just put five for now and I'm going to put in a heading and these are going to be called my variables all right so the first variable we do is going to be a counter so we're going to insert a just a register so we're going to new instruction registers and we're going to just set this equal to, so we're initializing a register to a certain number. So register, and we'll just use register number one. And register number one, we are going to set the initial amount to be zero. Okay, so then we're going to go zero, one, two, three, four up there. So we have our first register variable set to zero. So let's go to the actual register. So we're going to go data, type, register. And it looks like we use register one for something. So let's just use register two. So let's double click inside register two and we're going to call this counter. So I'm going to options keyboard, keyboard and counter. And we're going to make sure that that is zero. So let's go back and modify our program. So I just go back to edit, which brings us back. Let's go into register number one and change it to register number two. So there we go. And you should see counter. So now let's go in here. Let's add one more variable, which is going to be our point register um, item. So the I and J. So we're going to go new instruction, registers, and we're going to set equal to, and we're going to use point register I, J. And the first item we're going to change is what register or point register we're going to pull from. So if I go to data and I go to type, 
and go to position register right now we have position register here as home you may have a safe position you may have a tool change position so you may want to use position register number four so let's utilize position register number four so I'm going to go back to edit and we're going to use position register number four and then we're going to make sure that one of those elements starts out at zero. So we're going to use the Z offset. So if you remember from the PowerPoint, and we're going to use number three because we're offsetting in the Z direction. So if I go here, we're going to use number three, which is our Z position of position register number four. And we're going to set that equal to zero. Okay, so right now, no matter what the number is, inside that point register if we make it 400 as soon as we run through this code it will automatically make it to zero now just to prove that let's go into that point register number four so I'm going to go to data point register number four let's record this right away so I'm going to record this number so I'm going to go shift record so there you have it as recorded now if we want to put in some information here we can do offset position register and let's go into that position so this is where the position is at right now so if I go zero 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 and we make zeros all the way down the road so we're resetting everything and then I'm going to change the Z position to say 200 or make it whatever you want so if I go back into my program notice how it now says number three of the offset program so we go in here and we go step mode and we go forward so nothing's going to happen with the robot right now because we're just initializing things so now you'll see counter number two okay register number two which is our counter will be equal to zero same thing with our offset that z coordinate that we changed to 200 it's going to be set to zero once I go past this one line there we go so when I turn off my step mode let's go back into that position register here's my offset let's go to position and notice how the Z is now zero because we reinitialized this position register and we made it set equal to zero so no matter what numbers are in here we automatically cleared that and reset it to the number that we called out in the actual program and we could do the same thing with the counter as well so if I go to data type and go to that register and if I set the counter equal to say 200 so there are counter so I have to go back into that program and go back up to the top shift step mode go through here's our initialization of the counter clears it clears it turn off step mode and let's go back into that register so notice how we go to register counters now equal to zero okay so we're resetting those variables so now we're going to move up to our home position we we'll put some space between here and so we move up the home position then we do have our square program Okay, so inside here, we want to repeat the square program over and over again. So we need to take out a few things. We just want to go down to the point number two and then move over, move over, move over. So what I'm going to do is move the joint movement here outside of our square program and just have the square program right here. And then I'm also going to get rid of this home position. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this home position. So I clear delete yes then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few lines after this home position and then we move this to say area number 12 the CDM copy cut I'm going to select I'm selecting this I'm going to cut which notice how it goes away and then I'm going to go up to line 12 and I will go paste and I want to keep all the information so notice how it doesn't change our actual direction we just have our program in a different order so we want to repeat this four times so we're going to do something known as a jump label so right here at the end I want to jump once I have this I want to jump back up to the top Okay, so I'm going to put a jump label at line 14 so I'm going to go new instruction, jump label, and we we'll just put a label right here. So I'm going to go label number one. Now I'm going to name this, 
and we call this my repeat. So that's my repeat label. Okay, once we go through the square program once, we need to add one to our register, which is the counter, because we go through it once. We want to add one to that, which makes it one, and then two, and three, and so on, and so on, and so on. So I'm going to go insert a few more lines. So I'm going to go maybe, say, 12 lines, just to make sure I have enough. And then I'm going to add one to my register. So I'm going to go new instruction, registers, and we're going to add one to it. So we're going to set it equal to. So we're going to use register number two, which is our counter, is equal to register number two plus a constant of one. Taking the original number, which was at zero, we're adding one to it and we're resetting it so that it matches that number. So we're at zero plus one gives us one and we're resetting it to one. Then let's actually see this work so let's go data let's make sure the counter is at zero there it is so if i go back to my program i'm going to go to line 21 and shift step mode and i'm going to go forward okay so nothing happened with the robot we're just changing the register i'm going to turn off step mode go back into data and notice how our counter is now at one Go back to edit. So we added one to our counter. Now we need to do a decision. If our counter is equal to four, then we want to exit this loop. If it's not equal to four, we want to go back up to label number one. So we're going to go new instruction. We're going to go if statement. So we're going to do if equal to. So we're going to go if register number two which is our counter, so if register two is equal to a constant number of four, then we are going to jump to label two. Okay, so we're not going to jump to label one, we're going to jump to label two. So label two, we're going to make it as our end program. This only jumps to label two if the counter is equal to four. If it doesn't, it goes past this, and from there we're going to add our label or a jump label. So we're going to jump label to label one. Okay, so we're going to jump to label one, which is our repeat. So if it is equal to four, then we're going to jump to label two. So then here's label two. I'm going to go new instruction, label two. Okay, so here's label two. So running through this, so it goes to home position, goes down to the first point, bypasses this because it's not utilized right now, goes into our square program, goes to the next position, next position, next position, next position. Okay. Then it goes and changes the register number two and it adds one to it. Then it makes a decision. If it's register two is equal to four, we jump to label two. Because register two is equal to one right now, it bypasses line 23 and goes into line 24. Line 24 is jump to label 1. So we jump to label 1 right here. Then we go back here. Boom, 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 boom. We add 1 to that 1, makes it 2. Is it equal to 4? No. Jump label goes back. Boom, 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 boom. Adds 1 to that 2, makes it 3. Is it number 4? Nope. Jump label 1, goes back. Boom, 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 adds one to three, makes it four. If counter number two is equal to four, which it is, we jump to label two. Here's label two, and then we have our end program at the end. So I'm going to get rid of these lines here. ECDM, delete, and we're going to delete all these lines so that we don't get confused with that. So it jumps to label two and then ends that program. Okay, but it only jumps to label two if this is equal to four. Now we have everything that we need in order to repeat the program. So just right now, we just set up everything to repeat. We have done nothing with the offsets yet. So with the offsets, we have to do the same exact thing that we did with the register, which we have to add one to our register, because right now our offset is zero, which it runs the line where we coded it. Then we need to do an offset. So we can either put it before or after. It doesn't matter. But as long as we do it before the if statement. So if I want to put in the register before my counter here. So I'm going to insert one line. 
and then I'm going to add my point register modification. So a new instruction, registers, plus equal to, because we want to add some to our point register. So we'll go here, we're going to do position register i and j. So we're using position register number four, which is our offset. Notice how it says offset here. And this is where it kind of confuses people because it gives you offset over here, not right here. It should really put it right here. Um, but again, just know that position register number four, we called it as offset. Then we are going to add that or which variable are we going to do. We're going to do z, which is number three exit. And then we're going to set that equal to, so we'll go over here to find position register. It's all the way at the last line there. Number four, which is our offset. Number three, which is our Z, is we're adding, we'll say 100 millimeters to this. So we're going to do a constant of 100. So every time it goes up, it's going to add 100. 100, 100, 100. So by the time we get up here, it's going to be 400 millimeters above our original fixture here. So I'm going to label these items so that we don't get confused with what's happening down here. And then I'm going to pause the video right now and then we'll come back and kind of explain. All right, so I just added a few headings here. So we go to square program. Here's my offset variable changer. So we add 100 to it every single time. The Z axis. Then here's our counter variable change. So this counts our variable, which is the counter. And then here's our decision. Decision is going to be if it's equal to four, then we're going to jump the label two. Um, and if it's not equal to four, then we're going to jump the label one. And then if it is equal to four, it's going to end this program. Okay, so I just added some headings here so we understand what everything is doing down below here. Okay, so now that we are modifying our point position register here, which is our Z axis, now we need to actually add that modification to our lines of code. So if I go towards the end, and if you're actually on a teach pendant, then you just use the arrow key all the way over to the end. And if you have the shift on, it actually arrows you over in one click. So if you have shift, it jumps you over all the way over. So right here, we're going to add a position register. So we added the offset position register. And then what register we're going to use is number four. So I go position register number four. And we want to do that for each one of these items. So I go 18. So I go to the end. So I hold shift to the end. And we're going to add offset PR. And we're going to use number four. And we keep doing that for each of the lines. The wrong one. So if you accidentally pick the wrong one, you can easily just switch it position. And then we can get rid of this by going no option and it gets rid of it. So we go position register number four, go. So we have position offset register number four on each one of those. So position register number four, we're going to do PR of three. So now if we modify a bunch of things, we can actually do multiple position registries or multiple steps with this by just manipulating both the Z and maybe the Y coordinate. So if we're stepping up or doing an incremental step, we can do multiple steps at once because we're using the entire position register and the only thing that we're modifying in this is the Z because everything else is zero. So let's go up to the top and actually see this program run. And you'll see that there's actually going to be a problem that arises um, because of how we have our code right now. But you'll see what I mean in a minute here. So I go shift and I'm going to hit enter on here. And I'm going to turn off the teach pendant and let's see this thing run. All right, so you can see from the program, when we came down, we actually ramp up to our zero after we go all the way around because we come down to the position number two here from our first program. And if you notice, our label here is repeat number one here. So we go right from the repeat, we go up to position three, which has the offset. So what we need to do, even though we're coming down to position two here, we're going to come down to position two again with the same offset. So how we fix this so that we have four squares instead of a ramp up and then around, ramp up, around, and make it look like a parking garage structure is we're going to insert one line here. 
ECDM, insert, one, enter. And even though we're going to be at position two, we're going to do another linear movement to position two. So we're going to go add move point, one, linear movement and we're going to switch this to position two which is our first point and let's make this so we're at 200 millimeters per second to match these squares and we're going to add at the end our offset so offset frames oops i'm sorry offset point register so no option offset point register and then number four there we go so basically we're moving to this point twice it's the first time around so we go through first time around run through our frames set our variables to zero jogs down to home if it's not at home then it goes down in joint movement first corner of our square skips this because it's irrelevant at this point then it linears to that same point so it's actually skipping this the first time around and then goes to our third point then our fourth and then change all our offsets and variables and then jump to the original schedule. So I'm gonna go shift up and let's let this run to see what it looks like. First time around, goes up. And you can see now we have our fixing of our square. There we go. Now, if we want, we can add a home or go to home at the end. So let's just add that before we end this uh, tutorial here. So right at the end, we're going to label two, which is our end program jump. So let's insert one line here. Actually, let's do uh, two lines. And let's go our home position. So we'll go new instruction, add move point. We're going to do a joint movement. We're going to use a position register, which is number one, and we're going to go up to the top. Okay, so we set position register number one to be our home view. Okay, and we're going to go 100% up there. So let's try this again. There we go. So there is offsets. So a lot of times you're going to be doing a Z offset, um, but other times you're going to be do doing a Y or X offset or a multitude of that to get to an actual position. We'll do a more advanced offset for our next tutorial.